I don't know. It's, it's crazy. Every single one of them. Yeah. Every single one of the people who watches my videos on YouTube, super hot. I don't get it. Also very talented. It's super weird. I, 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 I don't... Oh! Oh! Oh, hey there. It's Doc, 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 Doc Holiday here. By the way, uh, I guess... Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. Uh, I guess I have some more professional Korean StarCraft content for you uh, brought to you by uh, StarCast TV. Uh, so I guess, uh, yeah, it's gonna be cool. Got a, a PBT for you guys today, uh, between free and piano. This is gonna be the second one that we brought to you here on the channel. I hope you guys have been enjoying the content. If you do, please consider hitting that subscribe button, man. Maybe even leave me a comment in the comment section below. Maybe even hit the like button. Who knows? It could, you could do anything, anything with your life and you know, the like button is you maybe one of those things. Anyways, guys, let's go ahead and get on into it. It's going to be really fun. Uh, this is going to be on Eclipse this time. Uh, so without, you know, any further ado, here we go. All righty, guys. Well, the bottom line, <laughs> that was really stupid, man. <laughs> we get we get a little loopy here at night. Uh, anyways, in the bottom left-hand corner, spawning as the white Protoss, we got Free. And in the top right-hand corner, spawning as the Teal Terran, we got Piano, aka Rocky Zero. I don't know where, the, where he got that name. That's a pretty dope name, Rocky Zero. <clears throat> yeah, I love, I love, I love all the Korean names. They come up with a lot of really creative stuff. Uh, don't get me wrong, it is annoying that I've mentioned many times that they just used whatever name they just feel like one day. Uh, but uh, overall, pretty cool stuff. Anyways, guys, this is, as you can see, PVT. We're on Eclipse. Did I say PVT earlier in the in the introduction? I don't even know. But uh, whatever, man. It's 11.40 at night. We're having fun. We're going to cast a StarCraft game. So, PVT, as you know, very macro-oriented. Of course, this is a two-player map here. So, potential for a little bit more action than a normal four-player map where everyone just likes to camp in their own little corner. But we're going to have to go ahead and see. Now, my guess is we're going to see a zealot out of this gateway here. It just seems like a good idea since you don't have to send a scout. You know, your probe doesn't have to walk all the way over there, so the zealot can do the scouting for you. And you get in there, put a little pressure on. You know, overall, I think it's a good idea. So, highly likely that we're going to see that. Um, yeah, cool. Anyways, we'll be seeing that in just a second here, but overall, yeah, generally a very macro oriented build now, or uh, matchup rather. Now, lots of stuff that Protoss can do in the early game, like the Zealot, that can do a whole bunch of damage. Are we really not seeing a Zealot? Wow. All that hype for the Zealot, okay, here we go. I was going to say all that hype for the Zealot, we don't see the Zealot, I'd be really sad. But in the meantime, Piano's base, we've got a very, very cheeky timed command center. We've got this command center coming down before we even have the initial marine. So, quite the adventurous build here. Zealot on the way now. Marine just about halfway done. So likely going to have two, three marines still. By the time that uh, the Zealot arrives, so that will be a, a little bit of a micro-adventure that we're going to have to go on together. In the meantime, looks like everything going very normal for the Protoss. I hope you guys are having a good day, man. I've had a spectacular one. While we wait for the builds to develop, just take a moment. Give yourself a hand for being you. Because you guys are awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Anyways, Bunker just about to be done in time for the Zealot to arrive. Look at the timing on that! The Zilla just walks right into the range of the bunker right as it finishes. The Marines hop in. Excellent play. Oh my god. Professional Korean StarCraft is a wonder to behold. The precision in which they execute these build orders, uncanny, one might say. But all right, guys, looks like we have some Dragoon boys about to come across the map here. Start poking away at this bunker here in a minute. 
When is the first factory going down? It looks like instantly, I start thinking, man, we should see a factory here pretty soon. And bam, it appears. Doc Holiday Pro Gamer confirmed? Who knows? Anyways, guys, Dragoon's going to come across the map here in a little bit. We do have Dragoon range on the way. Uh, and that is going to, of course, allow them to poke at this bunker for quite some time. While we wait for a tank. So we should be seeing the Dragoons walking across the map anytime now. Here comes a second Dragoon now out. And we're going to try and deny the scout here getting up the main ramp. Now the Nexus timing should be an indication that everything is hunky-dory for now. But that SCV was not allowed to get inside the main base to guarantee for sure that there isn't any kind of weird tech. Of course, you know, you'd have to like skip Dragoon range or something like that to uh, to get something weird out there. And now that we see the Dragoon range, we'll get at the bunker. Piano should know everything is right with the world. So instantly pulls three SCVs knowing three Dragoons are on the way. Oh my gosh, are we doing it? We're doing it. Okay. So we are trying to snipe. Oh my god, look at the micro! Insane! Tons of repairing going down over there. SCV's doing a real good job at keeping each other alive. We didn't even lose a Protoss unit! What the heck, man? Alright, so that was pretty sweet. Uh, sniped a bunch of SCVs here. And man, yeah, here we go. So this is normal. We have the repair uh, plus the Dragoons here on the thing. So you need one SCV per Dragoon on a bunker to repair them at the same time. Oh, this bunker getting very low, though. And spooky time is over. The tank has arrived, and it's time to push off these Dragoons. Get out of my uh, neighborhood, says the tank. You guys aren't welcome here beating up my, beating up my little doghouse here for my little Marines. I just feel like the Marines like get like stuck out here in the bunker. SCVs are all cozy here in the middle of the line. Tanks get to hang out by the factory and do whatever. Alrighty. So we do have plans on a very quick third expansion. And here it is. No, you know, reaver harassment or anything like that. Nothing too crazy going on here yet. Siege tank here going to be able to secure this natural expansion very nicely. Let's see, do we have anything crazy going on? We do have a starport. How about crazy? But this is going to be certainly uh, some nice early harassment here. Tank with siege mode. Vultures with mines. Very powerful, aggressive tool. Now, mine's going to be able to keep the uh, dragoons away for quite some time. While the tank does all the damage from the safety of the mineral line or behind the mineral line so likely going to see some very nice harassment here looks like we have a couple of units produced or sorry uh positioned rather here at the front choke here to the natural expansion looks like we're actually just gonna drop the siege tank in the natural expansion have it target down uh these uh these probes here and we're using now the mines to potentially uh set up some nice positions to harass from uh i don't you know, this this did not go uh, the way that I thought that it would go. Honestly, I think that if we had just put mines all up in here, it would have been potentially more successful. At least we would have gotten some units done. But, uh, you know, the vultures very, didn't really do very much. The initial siege tank shot got some damage done, but really uh, not an incredible move so far here out of Piano. We do save the dropship, though, and that can, of course, be a very nice aggressive tool. Uh, potentially a very, very helpful tool to crack bases. Uh, as you can, you know, drop on like over here and get the damage done. That type of thing. Uh, but for now, going to be pretty useless as we can't really afford to throw any more units away for the time being. So, Free very happy to just take his third base now. Continue to produce probes off of three next side and get a very, very nice, strong macro uh, economy going. In the meantime, Observer now flying into the main base here. Piano having all his secrets exposed. A little voyeuristic peeping Tom over here checking everything out. We got one at the front too being like, keeping an eye on you guys. You guys better not move an inch or I'll tell my Dragoon buddies and they'll come over here and beat you up. And, uh, you know, Terran's doing Terran things. Setting up mines in uh, places of opportunity to make sure that 
you know, no Protoss base can just go down without a Observer and a uh, Dragoon to kind of take care of it. And once again, we're making good use of this uh, dropship to just try to be annoying and uh, do a little damage. Make a little love. Get down tonight. You know what I mean? Just, just doing, doing, doing what you gotta do. Alrighty. Unfortunately, not very successful with the drops here so far, but nonetheless, it is good to continue to try and poke and be active with the air units and see if you can leverage any additional utility out of them. But in the meantime, looks like we've got a six-fact, very, very famous Terran two-base all-in type of attack here. So we're going to see a whole bunch of mech units come out of these factories here, and we're going to go for a very, very big push that is meant to end the Protoss. Uh, and if it don't work out, uh, Protoss probably going to do pretty good in the late game. Uh, as Terran is going to expend the time that it normally would have wanted to uh, take a third base and establish an economy and get those upgrades going and all this stuff, it's going to be like, nah, we're just going to go kill you. So, yeah, if this doesn't work out, Terran pretty screwed. Let's go ahead and see how this goes. As you can see, just gigantic number of tanks starting to pile up here. We're going to see a bajillion vultures as well. But, ooh, we have a very nicely timed Arbiter coming out here. Arbiter, of course, going to offer a lot of utility. We still have quite a little ways before it comes out here, and even longer until it has the energy to use any of its very incredibly powerful spells. In this case, will likely be Stasis, since that's what we're researching. Could you imagine, though, if you just canceled it and was like, nah, I'm going to recall. Alrighty. Task one accomplished. Terran already securing a very nice position here on the high ground, attacking up into this, of course. Going to be very difficult as you have a 50% miss chance when shooting up a hill. Siege tanks, of course, incredibly powerful at securing very large portions of the map here. So now it is time for us to play a little bit of leapfrog here as we're leapfrogging some of the tanks down the way. Now, this was cute. This movement was nice. There were three tanks that were on the low ground, if they had sieged up right there, they would have instantly been killed by the Zealots here. But, you know, I fear that too much of the army of the Protoss here was concentrated down on those three tanks, as the rest of the tanks on the high ground were able to shell away. We do only have three more tanks, though, so perhaps this was quite the successful defense now that we look at it. Vultures don't really pose a, an incredibly existential threat to our Protoss's uh, livelihood here. At this point, though, they are still meat in front of the uh, in front of the siege tanks, and they do very good damage versus Protoss units uh, due to the fact that uh, pro shields take full damage from every source. And these guys actually do a pretty chunky amount of damage. You're just used to usually seeing it do uh, half that uh, versus uh, a lot of other units, since it does uh, explosive damage, I believe, and that means it does half damage versus small or something something along those lines. Who knows? Point is, though, we need more tanks, buddy. Alrighty. So, Arbiter having a little fun here. You know, lending some uh, invisibility to his boys on the ground. Trying to poke away. Does get a cancel on these turrets. That's nice. That's going to allow the Arbiter to be have a little more utility. Let, him, let it move into the map a little bit more here without uh, risk of being shot down by the turrets. Since we don't have any other Goliaths, that's really the only anti-air that we have right now. But as you can see... No plans on taking a third base. This is all. This is it, man. Piano. Just slow pushing into the natural expansion. Free. Trying to keep a nice split army so that way when he is forced to engage, he can go in real big, real hard and do, you know, one big unanimous uh, push. Okay. Tanks, doing the Macarena a little bit here. We're going to back out here. Take a look at the whole battlefield. Oh my gosh, so many units getting baited on in. And this is terrible. This is not what you want as a Protoss player. The units are not on hold position. So we're having just tiny portions of the army filtering on into this gigantic wall of Terran units. Oh man, this is awful. We're now advancing the siege tank line up into the natural expansion. If we lose this fight right here, it is pretty much all over. The natural choke is going to be gone. A very nice stasis on three tanks in the back, though. And there are still a lot of Protoss units on the field here. Zealot's starting to get on top of tanks now. But we do have reinforcing tanks arriving here and sieging up. Oh, man, it is so close. 
but it does look like the Protoss has done it! Free has held in the... The three stasis siege tanks are the saddest of boys, as they're just gonna sit here waiting for their time. Little ice cubes. Oh, what a sad story. These zealots just hanging out here waiting for the stasis to end. There it goes. Oh, cheeky little mine. Vulture's probably pretty happy about that. Alrighty, once again, this fourth base has been shut down. Of course, playing that mine, just super valuable, something that every Terran knows how to do. Those sometimes forget, though. But an excellent hold. So, now we have our Terran player, Piano. Trying to establish a third base, and of course this is quite late. We have plus two, plus oh upgrades though. So these mech units, incredibly powerful. But man, is this third base late. So we're adding on some more factories, continuing down the path to the late game here. And the delay put on the fourth base here certainly isn't nothing. Very important that you do that. Otherwise, Proto's going to run away with the game very quickly. But let's take a look. I mean, look at the mineral counts here. We are very fastly approaching. Fastly? Quickly? We're very quickly approaching. One base Terran mode once again. And our defenses are stretched very thin between the natural and the third base here. Of course, excellent position right here. Going to cover both this natural expansion and the third base ramp right here. But very spread out, as you can see. Oh my gosh, and we have a huge recall in the main base here! So much of Terran's army is out in that position! We have a very small number of tanks trying to make its way up the ramp here. And tons of damage being dealt here. Look at this, SCVs in the main going down. SCV numbers declining sharply as army gets damage done. The defense though has been pretty excellent as you can see. Piano doing his very best to clean this up as quickly as possible. But an excellent recall, nonetheless. Very, very well played. Looks like a good portion of SCVs have survived that recall attempt. Looks like we have a second one coming over to the third. This base much more exposed, although it looks like... Piano is aware that this is going to be the next location targeted. Do we have an EMP? No, we don't. And this one is a massive, massive recall. Oh my gosh, this is a huge army. We have mines getting confused all over the place here. Units all up on the high ground. Tons of Dragoons massacring SCVs. And wow, already we're already sending the SCVs back? Okay. Alrighty. Well, I don't know. Here, here's here's my primary concern. Okay. It looks like these recalls are are certainly slowing down our Terran player here. Piano is, I mean, as you can see, very close to mining out here, and being put under all this aggression is going to make it very difficult for him to want to take a third at this point. Recall is an excellent tool to hit multiple bases when your opponent has multiple points of vulnerability. So fourth base here at this point would be kind of a liability. We will have to see what the decision uh, plan here, decision making, you know, the, the thing where you make the decisions. We're going to have to see what he does, basically, what the plan is here. Looks like we're going to put on another big attack. I think a good choice here. Potentially going to force the Arbiters to use their energy on some stasises instead of recalls. Of course, this is very risky as moving out on the map is going to leave your expansions uh, undefended uh, versus recall tactics. As you can see, Piano very skittish right now. Turning around his entire army just for a single zealot. Very worried about uh, you know the possibility of other recalls. 
Looks like this Arbiter for now getting shut down by the number of turrets that we have here in the natural expansion. And of course, really not worth it to, to, to recall here in the natural since there's like no resources here. Looks like Ob's moving out on the field, trying to get a lay of the land here, see where the army is moving, and see if there's any expansion attempts anywhere where a recall could be valuable. Alright, Terran coming through this choke here now. This is a pretty tight choke. Could put these tank lines very into, uh, into a very vulnerable position, where they can be stasis or even potentially recalled upon. Kind of eh, if he stasis here in the front, gets a couple of vultures and a science vessel, but some pretty big stasis is on the army in the back now. The Arbiter number is getting up very high, and look at that. The Storm's doing an excellent job at splashing these tanks down. Looks like there are enough Terran units here, at least for the moment, though, to deter a complete committal to killing off all the stasis units. Arbiter's moving forward once again. Looks like we got... Uh, no energy. Potentially missed an EMP or something there. But oh no. This is big, big mistake now. Uh, oof. This is a big army to lose for free. We have to get reinforcements out here as soon as possible to save these tanks. And it looks like we have just enough units here to make the Protoss want to pull out. Not risk their army to kill that uh, the vestiges of that big push. So, we do have top left double gas base here now. Secured for free. Piano, still one mining base. As you can see, both players kind of in complementary, let's say, advantages. Piano, obviously, very strong position right here at the natural expansion. Has a very powerful army, going to be very difficult to contest. As Free has lost many, many units due to the gigantic push that was at his natural just a moment ago. But still, Piano very much on the back foot economically, going to have an extremely difficult time to continue staying in this game unless he secures a fourth base and is able to slow down the expansion here of Free. Now, again, we are on a two player map here, so there are less options for expansions. But doesn't seem like that is going to be much of a factor. We have a huge Protoss army barreling down the throat of the Terran Natural at this point. Piano getting his tanks chased down. Oh my god, we have transferring SCVs being discovered here. Going to the third base here. Last two tanks being chased down. Oh my gosh. Look at the worker count just plummet. In the meantime... Mining base is here. For free, getting taken out by the main army. I don't know. What's the game plan? I guess we move our army here to the 12 o'clock. Or the, not the 12 o'clock, like the 10 o'clock or whatever the heck that is. Oh my gosh! Protoss units just committing suicide. That was so many Templar to lose for no reason. But man, there's a lot going on on the map right now. All right. Protoss now wrapping around the back. We have a... D Matrix tank here on the top of the ramp providing all of the tanking. But it looks like we might actually save this Nexus. That's pretty big. So here is the story. Okay. We got a floating command center. And we got a bunch of unemployed SCVs making it over to their first day of work back at the factory okay this is ridiculous 52 minerals okay this army is all that's standing between piano and oblivion and right now it is getting absolutely murdered by some stasis and a bunch of boys with swords strapped to their wrists so now that that is done oh wow okay well i guess now that it's done the game's over jeez Piano, unfortunately, unsuccessful with his six fact. And that being said, as predicted, put him in an incredibly difficult position going into the late game as he didn't have enough money to continue sustaining large 
army production. So, stuck on three bases, gets his third base recalled, gets his main recalled, and unfortunately we stalled for long enough that he don't have no money anymore, and it is freeze game. So, excellent play by both of our players here. Nice gambit uh, by, uh, <clears throat> by Piano, but unfortunately not going to work out for him, guys. That is going to be freeze game. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys had a really good time with me tonight. Make sure to take care of yourself. Stay safe, stay healthy. And y'all have a good one. We'll see you next time here at StarCast TV. Adios.